Hello, 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 and welcome to episode 277 of Prog Review. And if you haven't read the title or description, I'm talking about the Flaming Lips and their Yoshimi Battles the Pink Robots. This was donated. I can't remember who donated. I've lost a little slip. I usually put the little slip inside the CDs, but this was donated by somebody because I know some of you have been going, do, do the Flaming Lips, do the Flaming Well, I'm doing the Flaming Lips, aren't I? I've listened to this album more times than I, I care for. It's one of those albums that uh, just left me going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes, you know, albums that make you hate them are a lot easier to talk about than ones that just kind of wash over you like a bucket of warm piss. Um, the Flaming Lips, this is their 10th studio album, 10th, and they still couldn't get it right. Ha! Ah! Took them two years to record, two years to record it. Um, it's, yeah, it was released in 2002, July the 16th. Um, some say it's a concept album, it isn't, it's only very partly a concept album about robots and stuff. Um, it opens with a um, fight. Was it called not Fight Club Fight Test, <laughs> which is a rip off of Cat Stevens' father and son? I think they actually pay him for that now. Um, yeah, and there's lots of noise, and this is this is what kind of marks the album out. They do love adding live background noise to things, and you know, I found it really off-putting. I just found it really kind of really pretentious, old wank. You know, yeah, people. Um, it's all right for Roxy Music to do it, but Flaming Lips. On your bike, um, and then there's this. There's, then there's this, like I say, very small concept album about robots and robots getting feelings, and then robots want to take over the world, and Yoshimi learning kung fu and taking on the robots, and then that idea is is kind of you know put away by the by the fourth track. Um, well, no, the fourth track is an inst it's, it's instrumental, I believe. Is that's the one with all the screams on? Ah, oh, women's screams do not an instrumental make. Oh, it's bloody awful. Um, yeah. <laughs> My main problem is, um, well, you, you know, you get it. Uh, My my main problem is Wayne Coyne's voice. Only the only person who's allowed to sound like a whiny Neil Young is Neil Young when he's whining. I really can't tolerate Wayne, Wayne Coyne singing. People say I can't sing. Wayne Coyne couldn't hold a fucking note in a bucket. He was um, oh, just the most weedy, pathetic, boring voice. Much prefer him when he does um, was it Golden Path by the Chemical Brothers when he's more talky. Than, again, he's more like Ray Davis. Better when he talks than when he actually tries to sing. Um, but yeah, his voice kind of ground me down. And you know, the the content of it. Yeah, we go from um, pink robots and robots getting feelings to them stating the bleeding obvious. You know, we're all gonna die. You know, love and mortality. Um, so you can see why the hipsters of the time, you know, stroke their stroke their beards, adjusted their glasses, and their their funny headwear and threw their arms to heaven exclaiming that this was a work of sublime genius um, it's like no one ever wrote about love and dying before uh, <laughs> um, but yeah so you know I like what I like about it is I like the bits where Wayne Coyne's not singing there are some nice bits I was going to write down the actual minutes <laughs> I was going to be that fucking much of a wanker <laughs> to write down the exact moments I like but I'm, I thought no that, that's just getting mad and there you're just being silly but there's some of the nice there are some nice instrumental passages that I enjoyed um, a lot of the squelchy synth crap just left me wondering again if you can you see when you, if you're like me, at the same time you'd have been listening to a, you know tortoise standards and things like that, and then you go from that to this, and this is just like you know amateur hour, amateur hour at the at the local bar. Uh, in comparison, um, yeah, the music's kind of interesting, but the people who are playing it ain't got the chops, um, you know, and it's there's all these squelchy synthy bloops and blurps to distract you, and the same with the the sound effects and people screaming. 
uh, I mean, again, some of the songs are quite nice, like Do You Realise and, you know, the, the, the second half of the album, second bit, uh, is, you know, but again, they're all a bit samey and Wayne Coyne's voice irritates the life out of me and the lyrics are, you know, a bit teenager, a bit, a little bit teenager, you know, a little bit sixth form. You know, so I don't understand why. Well, no, I think I do understand why everybody lords it. It's because it is sufficiently different at that that point in time with music that's going on. This, you know, this would have stood out. I would imagine as being unique. Again, if you don't listen to unique music, you would think that this is the most amazing thing ever. But if you, you know, if you get around a bit, <laughs> if you've been around a block like I have, you know, you can see through some of it. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's not a bad album. You know, it's not a bad. I can see why people love it. I can see why people hold it to their hearts. But and I've listened to it a lot. I have. I've really given. I've. I've really tried to love it. You know, but it kind of just left me going. Oh, yeah, it's all right. It's okay. And that's the worst kind of response, I think, sometimes. It's better to really love something or really hate something than just go, I suppose it'll do. Um, there is a surround sound version, apparently, on DVD audio. If anybody if anybody uh, would like to uh, donate a copy, I'd really like to hear that, actually. Um, because it might... Um, I'd like to hear, you know, how... The, the songs are structured, you know, the sound effect, you know, all the squelchy. I'd like to hear because I've got a feeling that, that whoever wrote, whoever is the main writer, with Wayne Coyne, is he the main writer? Um, yeah, did a lot of this on, on acoustic guitar and then they overlaid stuff on top of it and you know, worked from the bottom up like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, you know, some of it I liked, some of it I didn't like. Wayne Coyne's voice is absolutely appalling. <laughs> one register, one register. And um, and uh, fuck, I'll have to give it a rating. Shall I just be Mr. Middle of the Road, shall I? I'm going to give this... I'm going to give this a very safe two and a half pink robots out of five. That's two and a half pink robots out of five. It was interesting. Yeah, I mean, I thought, yeah, no, I mean, it was an interesting album. I did, I did find it interesting to listen to. Um, you know, I'm not completely dismissing it. Is it progressive? Not really. But I can see there are some progressive tropes in there. A bit of Mellotron, uh, the way you know songs sing, you know, the, um, uh, some of the way the songs um, are structured, and um, I think they do some. Yeah, they merge together, don't they? they, they I don't know if the whole album merges together. Maybe I wasn't paying attention. I was listening to us on head. There, yeah, the mix as well on headphones. Some of the the samples, the drum, the drum tracks, the the whoever EQ'd the drums. Man, they made my teeth rattle. The the high frequencies on those, and that made it sound a bit old fashioned. It made it sound a little bit, you know, dated. You know. Um, but yeah, interesting. Like I said, I wouldn't mind giving the five point one mix a go, just to give it another go. But all oh, that scroll, that screaming on that track, oh blimey. Oh it's not like my day, we had proper music. <laughs> but yeah, and I don't like Wayne Coyne anyway, I think he's an arsehole. <laughs> um Yeah. Yeah, so I hopefully I've been gentle. For all, all of you people out there that absolutely love this record, I hope I've been gentle with you. I hope I haven't crushed your ego too much. And whoever it was who donated it, thank you very much. I'll have to. I don't know where the Amazon have slips gone. I'm usually quite methodical. Things go missing. They do, they do. Um, thank you again for donating the item. Um, like I said, if anyone would love to buy me the 5.1 DVD audio, I would love to give that a listen and share you my thoughts on that because um, I feel like I'm only getting half the half the, half the story you know it's, it's ambitious it is an ambitious album I'll give them that it's ambitious and um, like I said for the time 2002 I can see why people really got behind it really dug it but for me I don't know maybe Wayne Coyne can have some singing lessons maybe I'll give him some 
because I'm a great singer, I am. <laughs> anyway, my name's been Darren. I've been wobbling my chops at Yoshimi versus the old pink robots here. Sorry, not versus, battles the pink robots. Do get it right, Darren, otherwise I'll correct you in the in the comments box below. Um, and, yeah, again, thank you, whoever it was. Mystery, mystery donator. Uh, hopefully that satisfied all you people out there that have been whinging about doing this one. And I, I really have given this a lot of listening. So, like I said, I've lost count of many times I've listened to it. Um, so that's it then. Only one more thing to say. Don't really count because it ain't prog, but we'll do it anyway. Shall we do it? Shall we do it? I know you want me to do it. You're, you're bracing yourself. You're hanging on. You're going, oh, my hanging on is every word. So here we go then. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Prog on. <laughs>